And we are back with another episode of Upward and Onward. I have a question for you guys out there. Is that coffee that you're drinking in the morning getting a little boring? Maybe the tea or the pancakes on a Saturday morning? All right, well, I'm sitting here with Savannah Campbell. She is the owner of Caribe & Co., a Caribbean-inspired syrups business, and she's here to spice up your morning. So welcome, yeah. Savannah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's so good to see you. <laughs> and, good to see you, too. Yeah, and we finally made this happen. I'm so happy that we're doing it, and um, thank you for being so welcoming when me and my family had came by at the Wickenden Street Market, and you were there. You offered us some samples. Um, I think another guy was walking by, and I was like, yo, you got to try out these samples, too, and he was like, all right, pretty damn good. So <laughs> it was a great day, and thank you yeah. for being so welcoming. Thank you. Thanks for having me so much. Of course, of course. I think what would be helpful for some of our listeners and some of our viewers is if you could just take us back and tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into cooking and all that. Yeah, so um, I'm a Jersey girl, um, Jamaican-American Jersey girl from okay. South Jersey. Um, grew up with a lot of, um, you know, that inspiration, which is I carry throughout my brand now, but like Caribbean flavors. Um, you know, I'm from the part of Jersey where it's a lot of like, you know, a lot of local, kind of like here in Rhode Island. Yeah. Um, so very big garden. We grew everything from like scotch bonnet peppers to like tomatoes, strawberries. We had like fruit trees, mm. grapevines, like all local, like right in our backyard. So like from the time I was born, you know, really, I just had like a very um, strong connection with food mm. and good quality, like fresh local food. Yeah. Um, so it was just something that I naturally gravitated towards. Both my parents love to cook. Yeah. And, um, you know, love to cook Jamaican food specifically. Oh, yeah. And um, it was something I was involved with okay. from very young. So helping my mom, like, whatever the case may be, yeah. you know, at whatever's age appropriate. Like, I was scrambling eggs. And okay. then I was, like, you know, mixing the chicken with, like, seasoning and stuff like that. Then she's like, okay, you can, like, turn on the stove, but only if I watch you. Like, yeah, if I'm cause... right next to you, then you can turn on the stove. Yep. So um, food has always been like a big part of my life. And I went to a summer program when I was like 11 or 12 um, for the high school that I eventually ended up going to. It was a culinary program hmm. um, at Salem County Votech in South Jersey. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. Um, but it, um, you know, I went to their summer camp program, loved it. I ended up going to that high school. I did four years of culinary arts, two yeah. years of pastry arts. Hmm. Um, and like, you know, Split into semesters. I wasn't in high school for six years. Okay. Okay. It's okay <laughs> if you were, though. Because, you know, hey. Yeah, it's okay. Everybody grows at their own pace. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I kind of, like, found out that that was something that I really loved. Okay. And that I was good at through that program. And then I eventually um, went to community college for a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, saved on those student loans. Yep. Um, and then I went to Johnson & Wales, which is why I'm here that's right. <laughs> in Rhode Island. Is that so. right? So that's what brought you to Rhode Island? Yes. Okay. So I moved to to Johnson & Wales, moved to Rhode Island um, in 2017. Okay. Um, I only had two years left, so I graduated in 2019. I took an internship okay. in Aspen, Colorado um, at a beautiful, beautiful resort. And mm. Colorado is just gorgeous. Yeah. I miss it, honestly. It's like one of the most beautiful places I've been. Really? Um, learned so much out there. Um, stayed through the pandemic and everything. And oh. then eventually I was brought back to Rhode Island, um, you know, in search of a new job, mm -hmm. new, um, it's a new environment and Rhode Island was very familiar to me, so. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right, interesting. So it was that you were going to JWU and that's what brought you to Rhode Island. You were from Jersey, came to Rhode Island for JWU and you studied culinary arts at JWU, is that correct? Yes. Nice, and then also food and business entrepreneurship? Yes. Oh, that's really cool. Yes. So how was that experience like? Food, business, entrepreneurship, like, how does that all tie together with some of the courses that you took? And, like, are there some that you remember even to this day that have been really, like, impactful in what you're doing now? Yeah. Um, so I didn't start out going to Johnson Wales to be, like, an entrepreneurship major. It kind okay. of, like, something that I discovered along the way. But, like, I definitely knew I was going to do culinary arts. Mm. Um, so I think my second year I started taking, like, business courses and, like, writing business plans and learning how to read financial statements and things like that. Nice. But those classes really stuck out to me because I feel like, you know, the culinary arts industry is something that you can very, um, it's very approachable to learn it as you go. Yeah. Like you can start out prep cutting onions for your entire shift yeah. and work your way up to executive chef. Like Which it's, is awesome. Yeah, with, with no prior education and it's very possible. Hmm. Um, but when it comes to numbers, yeah. the numbers are the things that are like the most important hmm. in business. Oh, I believe it. So um, those really stuck out to me. I had to take 
you know, I can remember just like, oh my God, the hours of like, you know, like the 30 page oh, business uh, plan. And really? like, like 10 pages of that is like financial statements and productions and stuff like that. So interesting. Stuck out to me because it was traumatizing. Yes. But also <laughs> because it's important though. It so, is, it is. Um, yeah. Nice. So you learned a lot about not only just like cooking and like the actual hands on, you know, part of putting a meal together, but also like, what goes on behind the scenes and like the business part of things too. Yes, nice. because I think for chefs, or at least for me mm. personally, it's like the creative aspect mm. um, is my personal favorite part and it's the easiest part. Mm. It's it's trying to take that creativity and like translate it to a menu that will make you money. True. A menu that your clientele will like to make you money. It's it's all wow. about the, the dollar at the end of the day. Yeah. So that's the most important part, you yeah. know. Definitely, definitely. Really cool to know. I wouldn't have maybe thought about like Going to Jewu and just studying culinary arts, and also you did food and beverage entrepreneurship, so mm -hmm. that definitely helps in regards to like the business side of things. But it sounds like an awesome experience that you had there, and really was valuable for you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what's up. That's what's up. What was your favorite part of your whole college experience? Because you know you weren't from Rhode Island, so you came to Rhode Island and you're studying at Jewu. Um, what was your favorite part of being in Rhode Island, learning about culinary arts, things of that nature? Mm. I had so many fun experiences. Um, I got into like some cool volunteering opportunities nice. um, for the, it was like a couple food and wine festivals. Okay. Um, and I actually got to meet one of my favorite chefs, Alex Cornishelli from Food Network. Interesting. Um, through one of those events and volunteering. Nice. So that was like a really cool memory that like I'll never forget. Mm. And um, you know, just, just um, I guess like the, the idea of like learning in a space where you're still being nurtured, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's helpful. Um, is very helpful, <laughs> and um, those are like some of my favorite parts. And of course, like meeting some great friends and yeah. and um, you know people that you can still have a connection with outside of um, or after college. Yeah, that's what's up. So you graduated, right? And you can either go back home or you can stay in Rhode Island. But how to happen? You got trapped here. Like this place is like a black hole, Rhode Island. So <laughs> you're also a victim of the black hole. And are you happy that you're still in Rhode Island? I am. Yes. Yeah. Nice. I feel like this is a very comfortable, cute area yeah. for me to live. Like, I live in Providence, and nice. I feel like it's the perfect sized city for me. Yeah. Like it's not too overwhelming, but there's still you know things going on. There's still um, you know opportunities. Like I come from a very very small town mm. where I think we have like two stoplights. No. Yes. Two stoplights. Two. Interesting. Two. It's like my 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 town is so small. We like scare, share a school district with another town. Okay, I see. Um, but like my graduating class in high school was ninety six people. Holy moly! Wow. Um, so it was a small small class, small school, small yeah. town. <laughs> Very small town vibe. So like, yeah. you know, I feel like to go from that to like a, a like a New York City, for example, yeah. would be too much for me. But yeah. Providence is perfect size. Yes. I love the coastal vibes, the mm -hmm. walkability. Yeah. Um, it's just like an awesome place to live, honestly. The I food agree. is great. The food is unreal. Food scene, and it's like that's that's my whole yeah. thing. It's like if I'm not like you know working mm -hmm. with food, I'm like leisurely enjoying food, <laughs> which you as know? you should, as you should. And you make some damn good syrup, so thank you for thank that you. too. Yeah. All right, so after college, I know you've you know started your own thing, and that's Caribbean and Co. But prior to Caribbean and Co., have there been other roles you've been in as a chef and can you tell us a little bit about that yes okay so um post-college i like i was saying before i moved to aspen mm -hmm. um you know i worked in resort and banquets for like the majority of my career honestly okay um i have worked in a la carte restaurants which is just like you know when you're just like serving plates versus you know for individuals versus for like parties of like 400 yeah um so i've kind of worked in like different aspects um everything from like steakhouses to like upscale hmm. resorts. Um, I've even worked in like a Japanese really? spot. I love Japanese food. Yeah. Um, but I've taken on many different roles. I've done like, you know, the managerial, um, mm. you know, like stuff you sit at your desk and do like- uh, Inventory. In inventory, invoices, like that kind of stuff to hmm. of course working the line, like leading the line in, really? in expediting services. Um, you know, training, like I've, I've done, a, I've been able to touch on a lot of things yeah. like in my career in the food industry yeah. um, in like a short period of time. And I'm grateful for those experiences because they've like, some of them have translated into owning a business. Like, yeah. you know, the restaurant industry is very people focused. Definitely. And, uh, you know, I guess a lot, most businesses are because like 
that's that's the goal that's of businesses the goal. Yeah. is to, like to meet somebody's needs. Yeah. But um, you know, I think that's translated and and helped me grow as a person because coming from a back of house person, mm. I'm not like usually face to face with my customer. True. But now I am the only face yeah. that my customer will see with for my brand yeah. really. So um, you know, just like it's helped me like build those person to person connections as yeah. well as um, you know, just just know kind of what goes with what when I'm yeah. like you know, making videos, making recipes with yeah. my with my syrups and um, just like this kind of like all come together to help me like personally and professionally. That's awesome. That's really cool. Good for you. Thank I'm you. happy for you because um, I think that, of course, it's fun and exciting to work at a restaurant or some business, but you also took a leap outside of the normal path and you did something really cool, which I got to experience firsthand trying those syrups that day and you started Caribbean Co. So I'm curious where the idea come from and how did you get motivated to start it? It's kind of a funny, not funny story, I guess. <sighs> but um, so creating has always been one of my favorite things when it comes to food. It's like, you know, taking, you know, odds and ends that you have at home mm-hmm. or, you know, you know, when I was growing up, like taking things from our garden, like this is ready to pick this day. Like, let's use this for dinner. Mm-hmm. Um and creating something beautiful. So creating has always been my favorite thing. Um, so honestly, it was just an idea. Is that right? It was like, okay. <laughs> it, it was just an idea. It like, just came to you? Like, it just, it came to me. And I remember I was like sitting at my kitchen counter and I have like a, a notebook okay. kind of full of ideas and random thoughts. Nice. And I just like wrote it down and I called my mom because like my mom listens, she'll listen to me yeah. like rant and rant about stuff. She's a good mom. She's a good mom. Mom, if you're watching, thank you for shout listening to her to my rant. Mom. Yes, shout, <laughs> shout out, out to, to her mom. mom because I get to enjoy the syrups now and so do other people which it puts a smile on their <laughs> face just like it did to mine. Yes, but I remember just like having the idea like what if you could put like these different flavors that like I grew up, a lot of the flavors I have are like things I grew up eating mm. um, or like loving, you know, how could I, I could put that in a vehicle to yes. like put into your seltzer water, your coffee, your Ooh. cocktails, and you have like a little taste of the Caribbean. Yes. Um, so it was an idea that I had. I called my mom and I was like, I have this idea. <laughs> and my mom has heard 10 million ideas from me. Oh, I believe it. Because I just, you know, like tell her stuff like that. But yeah. um, this one I actually, you know, I told one of my friends mm-hmm. and she actually pointed me in the direction of Hope in Maine. Oh, really? And she was like, if you're going to do this, like they're like a, a business incubator for culinary businesses. You should check them out. Yeah. And I think as soon as I reached out to Hope in Maine, yeah. it was like, um, I felt like I couldn't turn back at that point. Not in right. a bad way either. Yeah. I was just like, I made the contact and they were like, yeah, we can like, you know, we can start you in the class then. We can get you started with like, huh. here's a, the number to a graphic designer. Here's like this, really? blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, I guess I'm doing this. It's <laughs> like, happening. <laughs> I guess this is the idea that's going to actually come to fruition. Yes. So that's, that's awesome. That's kind of how it happened. Really cool. And now you began working with Hope in Maine, and they helped you get in touch with, what would you say, a graphic designer? Graphic designer. Like, I had to get, of course, all my products tested. So okay. they actually went through a lab at Johnson & Wales. Is that right? But um, Hope in Maine, like, gave me their contact side. I, I didn't have it, even though I'm a JWU graduate. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, I, I took classes through them nice. um, to like understand just like starting a business a okay. little bit better. So, yeah, all I those see. resources came from them. That's awesome. Now, after your experience with Hope in Maine, and it is a incubator and food business, right? That's what they are. They kind of help people get off the ground with an idea that they have that's related to food. Is yes, that correct? Okay. I mean, like you're in the driver's seat, so to speak. Okay. So they can definitely like point you in the direction, you know, help you with all these resources, whether it's like access to funding or mm. it's like a graphic designer or something like that. But, you know, you ultimately get to say if you're gonna start your business now, mm. you're gonna start it in five years, mm. you know, like you are in ultimate control. But they um, incubate businesses based in Warren. They just opened a um, a retail space in Providence. Oh, is that um, right? I didn't know yes. that. Cool. Yeah, so it features like I, I don't even know. It has to be like well over a hundred local makers really? um, that have started at Hope in Maine and others that are just local and like beloved brands. Nice. Um, features them on their shelves, retail nice. on their menus. Really. Um, to really highlight that local vibe and and I was lucky to have that be my first store that my products were featured in, and that really? was only four months into my business. Oh my I had gosh. products in a store. That's so so cool. Where exactly is the store? Um, one hundred Westminster Street in Providence. 100 Westminster Street, guys. If you guys aren't on Instagram and you aren't following Cree Bank Co., which I'll post their Instagram right here, 
But if you haven't gone to their Instagram yet and you're not seeking them out on the weekends, 100 West Minister Street in Providence is where you can go there, get some damn good syrups, and it's going to put a smile on your face. Yes. Yes. <laughs> cool. Thank you for sharing about that and your experience with, you know, Hope in Maine, being in college, how this idea about Caribe and Co. began. So I'm curious, after you got started, were there any challenges that you ran into with, like, the syrups not tasting as good as you wanted to and you had to maybe tweak the recipe and things of that nature? I imagine there was. Um, so I did a lot of the initial testing, kind of, I guess, like, family and friends testing. Okay. Um, so I would, like, make them just, like, at home okay. and test out recipes, like, um, then I would like send them to family members. I took one. Um, I have a habanero syrup. Do you? Uh, which is like fruity, sweet, spicy, great for like spicy cocktails. Interesting. And last summer I took um, it was a spicy cucumber mojito to okay. my friend's cookout, and her boyfriend drank almost the whole thing. Oh really? So I was <laughs> like, I think this is confirmation that it's good. <laughs> I think it's working. <laughs> I was like, okay. He just validated this whole uh, process. Hundred <laughs> percent. If he can drink the whole damn thing, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really really cool. So that was kind of like my first step was like you know seeing if it's something that people like. Yeah. Because you know I could like it, but it might not be uh, interesting for other people. So of course. Um, I started there. And then, of course, I had to, like, work in scaling up the recipes. That was, like, a difficult, you know, scaling is not just – it's it's math, yes, which, but, you know, I can do. But it's, like, there, there are other things that you run into. Yeah. And, you know, my product is, like, shelf-stable. So it's, like, making sure it's, like, at the right pH. Mm. And in some of the recipes, when I scaled them um, – what worked for the pH bef to get the pH down before didn't work anymore. I, I needed to like adjust the recipe there. I see. Um, but you know, nothing that couldn't be solved, but definitely like owning a business comes with challenge after challenge. I believe it's it. like jumping hurdles. What is that sport where you jump the uh, track? I think like, or is at it least just track? I think it's track, but there's <laughs> okay. maybe a specific like activity in track. I think it might be just like a, you know, it, if someone knows, drop in the comments. But yeah. we're gonna just rock with track. So yeah. So it's like that. You would you would it's equate like, that to yeah. It's like okay. you're running. It's like you go a good stretch, and you're yeah. like, I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. And then you like hit a hurdle, Ooh. and you're like, Oh man. Then you get back up, and then you run yeah. for maybe a little bit longer than last than the next the last time. Then you hit another hurdle, and it's just like you know. But that's life. That's not life. to be like super deep and yeah. <laughs> you no, know, we, can, we can go deep and here. everything like that. But yeah. um, that's just kind of a part of how it is. It's like you run into things that you never could have expected. That's right. Um, it's like, you know, if you if you think you have everything under lock and key mm. and you have everything together for your business, mm -hmm. think again. Think again. Think you, again. You'll be surprised. <laughs> you'll be surprised. Something is always going to surprise you. Yeah. Um, and it could be for good. It could be for bad. That's but, right. But, you know, it's definitely um, come with its challenges. But, you know, I would say equal amount, if not more, of successes. Just seeing people love my um, product. That's so, like, gratifying. And I'm yeah. so grateful that I've been able to turn this into my full-time job. Yes. I'm so happy for you. Good for you. Thank That's you. really, really cool. And I'm rooting for you. I can't wait to see other people get out there, try the syrups, and hopefully let us know, let Savannah know herself how good it is because I can say it time and time again, but I want to hear it from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so as you got your product out there and more people are trying it and you're getting some feedback, uh, are there some ways that people began using your syrups that were maybe a little unexpected? Yes. Yeah. So my initial idea, like when I first had the thought, was coffee and cocktail syrup. Yeah, sounds good. And then I expanded the name to be culinary syrup mm. because I was like, oh, well, you can use this on pancakes. That mm. was kind of like my my next thought. And yeah. I was like, oh, pancakes, that's cool. Yeah. Like So now they're not just for drinks. They're for food, too. Ooh, true. And the ways that people have used them for food, some of them have surprised me, honestly. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah, and it's like I'm happy to be through like Hope and Maine's community to be like – um, in cl such close proximity to other businesses where I've had them use my products in like specials that they've done. Yeah. Um, so in cakes, in like the filling for macarons. Really? Um, what else? That's like really just, just so many things that I didn't even, it didn't even cross my mind. Yeah. But, um, you know, they've been used for. So that's really cool because people have been able to take my idea and kind of like expand on it, which I think is like, you know, so cool. 100%. Mm -hmm. That's just a testament, I feel like, to like, Doing your thing, whatever you are focused on, whatever you think is a good idea, doing that and putting it out into the world, because you never know how it'll be received. And like you can do something and think about it in one way or two, and people can take it and use it and apply it in a different way, just like your serve. Mm -hmm. So please, if you're listening, I want you to be encouraged. I want you to work on whatever it is that's on your mind. I want you to go out there and put it out 
into the world because yes. what, what's the worst that could happen, right? You, if you fail, you can pivot and you'll learn from it. So exactly. the same way that Savannah made those syrups and the same way that that guy drank all the mojito, <laughs> <laughs> I hope that one day you guys make something and someone has the equivalent of drinking all of the mojito that was prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I hope they have that equivalent. That's yes, great. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's funny. That's really cool. Uh, now, it's been how long since you started Korea Bank Co.? I started September of last year, so okay. going on nine months. Really? I would have thought that it's been way longer because the way that you presented yourself when I was at the farmer's market, and then I saw you a couple weeks afterwards at a different farmer's market, super prof- super professional and just so welcoming. It seems like you've done this a ton of times and you've been in business for a long time, but I'm curious, after being in business for maybe nine months now, um, what would you say has been the most rewarding feeling like after seeing your product out there and all that? Um, I would definitely say is like when people take the time out of their day to either come out in person to buy my products, mm. you know, cause like, of course I have an online store as well. So I do e-commerce, but to physically leave your house and come out specifically to buy my product yeah. is like the biggest, I guess, like, you know, um, thing you could do, like one of the biggest things you could do or when people, you know, take their time to write me a review or, yeah or give me their feedback. Like I've had, I had one lady, I did an event at a a brewery a couple weeks ago Mm -hmm. and I had a very nice lady. I didn't catch her name, but like, if you're watching, please um, let me know who you are. Yeah. Um, But she came up to me and she was like, I've been, I've been watching you. Like I've I've been following you. (laughs) I've been following you on Instagram and I tracked you down here. Oh my God. Because I got the chocolate rum cream syrup and now I can't have my coffee without it. I need it. (laughs) That's awesome. So I need it. And I was like, (laughs) Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll do. Well, how much you, you need? Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's great. So, um, you know, that was like very flattering. It's like I've created a product that now people like need. Yes. Like in her words, she needs, needs it, it in her coffee. So like, yeah, that's really cool. Um, or when people go through the product very fast, like mm. I have a, a bottle with 19 servings. You need about a tablespoon to make one drink. Yep. So, you know, I had a family buy two bottles, which is enough for 36 drinks. 36 drinks, yeah. And she came back to me the following weekend, and she was like, my family drank all two bottles. Like, we used used all two bottles. I love that. Which is like 36 drinks, and I was like, that's amazing. That's amazing. Here's more. (laughs) Yeah, really. Take some more, please. Take some more. But um, those are like really gratifying moments that make it seem like, you know, it's all worth it to know that people are actually, um, you know, you're bringing something different to the table. People are like, actually enjoying it yeah 100 percent. so now it's been a couple months now and you've got your feet on the ground you know you're starting to move what is exciting for you when you look out into the future so um i would definitely say like the expanse expansion and shift of my business so you know my goal is to be primarily an e-commerce business Mm. um and have it be where like like social media content is like my main way to reach my customers and get like you know the majority more than 50 percent of my sales through e-commerce um and then you know wholesale of course and like like meaningful not that none of them are meaningful but like you know things that are kind of more of a revolving door where Mm. it's like if you have um my syrup on your menu at your cafe and it's in your drink, it's like you can't make that drink without my syrup, right. so you have to keep ordering my syrup. That's right. Um, and I think like those kind of accounts are gonna be very key for yeah. like pivoting my business to be like primarily e-commerce and wholesale. Yeah. Um, Cause I love doing farmer's markets and I would still do farmer's markets for like bigger occasions. Yeah. But like that's kind of like the next step for my business because mm-hmm. one of the things that, you know, um, pushed me to shift outside the restaurant industry is like work-life balance and I think mm-hmm. that you know, having my business be, um, you know, e-commerce and wholesale primarily would really help me get that work-life balance that I think we're all chasing. It's like yes. a very, very much our generation and like Gen Z is like, um, you know, I'm not, what is it saying? I'm not living to work. I'm, I'm working, working to, to live. live. Yes. Or no, no, I'm not working. Wait, wait. I think it's the other way. I'm not working to live. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm not I'm not to living work. to work. <laughs> yeah. I'm working to live. Yes, that's, that's right. what I want. <laughs> that's what we all want. That's what we all that's what we want. All yes. Want. Okay, <laughs> so cool. I'm like chasing that dream. <laughs> Hell yeah, as you should be. And you're well on your way towards it. I think, you know, you've taken that step out and you've already done a lot and it's really cool to see. I know that Thank my you. myself and my family, uh, we were so happy when we got to meet you, try some of the samples and also just see you doing your thing. So, I'm Thank so you. happy for you. 
please keep it going. Um, Thank you so much. You're doing a great job. So outside of work, what do you like to do in your free time? Do you like to travel? Do you like to find new places to eat? Yes. Yes. So first I want to say that sometimes I find it hard to stop working, Is like to right? separate, just because it's my thing now. Yeah. And um, sometimes I find it hard to like know when to stop. Yeah. But, you know, when I do that, I try to like have set days mm. um, where I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do much today. I'll, like, I'll send a couple emails, but I'm not going to do too much. Good. Um, love to go out to like restaurants, cafes, bars. Mm -hmm. um, but like, you know, like like cocktail bars when you like dress up really cute, not like, yeah. you know, like any old bar. But like, yeah, yeah. I love the, you know, dining experience. I love like the food industry yeah. and like. I love all that kind of stuff. So yeah. that's what I love to do in my free time. I love to go to concerts. Oh, nice. Um, I really got into that like this past year, really. Is that um, right? Since they were like, you know, able to do concerts like before, um, yeah. you know, like post COVID restrictions. That's right. Um, I love to travel. I haven't done too much traveling since I started my business because mm. like I do everything for it. So <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to there. get away like physically from Rhode Island. Yeah. But um, I love to travel. Nice. Um, you know, I would love to. Um, making plans to like do some of that um kind of like in downtime in the winter yeah com coming up 2024 should. you uh um, watch any good shows reading any books anything um, of that nature i'm loving the ultimatum right now the ultimatum i haven't heard of it so i am like anti reality show okay but i found the show called the ultimatum who like change that is that right and it's like a dating show and couples go in as couples one of them wants to get married one doesn't oh god so they go in <laughs> and they have a trial marriage with someone that they meet in this scenario oh, god. so basically they're like partner swapping oh my, wow they live with this partner for three weeks okay and decide if they want to go home with their original partner oh, my god. or start a relationship with this new partner oh that sounds like it could end up in a lot of chaos it does it does but it's so good you can't take your eyes off of it yeah. but like you know, the episodes are being released on Netflix like three at a time. Okay, nice. A week apart. And I'm like, Boom. no, yes. give me the rest of it. Give me it all right now. <laughs> like, I need it. So now I'm just like, you know, watching random things until it comes out again on Wednesday. But I'm loving okay. the ultimatum right now. All right, you got two more days. Two more days. I'll get there. You'll get there. I'll get there. You'll get there. <laughs> sure enough. That's funny. Thanks for sharing about what you like to do in your free time. Of course. And um, I'm curious now that we've talked about your work experience and what you like to do in your free time. Looking back, has there been anybody who has been really instrumental in your success or your growth, or it could be a resource, a mantra, a theme, a motto, anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely goes back to my mom. Yeah. So my mom has been like a consistent, supportive figure um, throughout my life, mm. especially the life of my business and like my career, um, but really my family as a whole. Like I said, like when I have those ideas and I'm like, you know, calling her, who knows, like five or six times a day. And I'm like, <laughs> I made this recipe. Okay, I'll call you in a little bit. And then I adjust the recipe. And I'm like, I fixed the recipe. Yes. And then I'm like, I'll call you in a little bit. And it's like, okay, I finalized the recipe. She's like, okay. All right, we got it. <laughs> we, I got you. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. But, um, you know, she's been very supportive throughout it all. So um, definitely my family has been a um, great resource. Like when I first, so I started at Farmer's Markets and then I opened my online store, I think in October. Okay. And like I think I launched at midnight. Hmm. Like minutes, my sister like placed her order. Really, she was like, "I'm gonna be the first customer that I you have that. online." You're so a great sister. That kind of support, like I really appreciate from my family. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what's up. I love that. Love that. Yes. Good. So, if someone is listening to this podcast or watching, and they think to themselves, "Wow, Savannah is so cool. She's done a really good job of launching this idea into a business, and I want to do the same thing." What advice would you give to that person? Um, just start. Just start. Just start. You know, you don't have to have the um, fully realized picture, the final goal ready mm. when you start your business. Mm. You know, I feel like um, regardless of the community that you're in, it's like, um, you know, small businesses are like an essential part of our culture as a nation. It's like, you know, there's like an understanding that you will grow yeah. and you will shift and change when you start a business. So it's like, Get your idea out there. You never know the feedback and like the reaction that you're gonna have to it, um, where it could take you. Yeah. It's like just get started. It could be a very preliminary idea or mm -hmm. concept, and you could be heading in toward towards your goal. The world may never know what your goal is until you get there, but like just start on the path to getting there. Love that. Great mm -hmm. advice. Thank you. 
You guys heard it here first from Savannah Campbell, the owner of Caribbean Co., a Caribbean-inspired culinary syrups business. If there's an idea and you're thinking about it and you're looking for a way to make it something that's viable, just get started. Just get started. Just get started. We love that. Anything else you want to share with us, Savannah, while we're still here and while we uh, have the listeners and the viewers tuned in? Well, um, well, thank you for having me. Of course, um, of course. Again, and you know, to everyone who's out there who's been a supporter of my business, like, thank you for your support, and hope to gain some new supporters and like, you know, mm. reach a new audience. Yes. Um, you know, yes. Uh, through opportunities like these. But um, yeah, I just want to say that I'm very grateful for where I am and everyone that's helped me mm. get to where I am. And um, this is only the beginning. That's right. It's only the beginning. Just getting started. Yes. Well, I can't wait to see what you do in the future. I know a lot of great things are going to be coming your way. And um, maybe if you're willing, we'll have you back in a couple months and just see how things are going. Most definitely. Sweet. We'll do that. Well, thank you, Savannah. This thank has been you. a blast. Uh, I appreciate you sitting in the seat. And I can't wait to see all the great things you do. For the people watching, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, please. Go check out Savannah's Instagram. I'll post it right here once again and the the website. So if you can't find her in Providence, go check her out online. Try the syrup. I had the Mexican vanilla syrup and so good. I put in the tea most mornings. I might have to do some pancakes or something like that, but I'll let you know how that goes. Please do. Yes, I will. (laughs) All righty, guys. See ya. Thank you. Thank you.